Sports. Friday at 7 p.m., your weekend sports on Talk Radio Europe with the Friday Sports Bar. You're tuned into Talk Radio Europe and the Friday Night Sports Bar with me, Dom Aldworth, coming to you live from the studios. Coming up over the hour of sport, it's a weekend of El Clasicos across Europe. AC Milan taking on Inter. Paris Saint-Germain versus Marseille. And of course, the El Clasico from the Camp Nou this weekend. On Sunday night, Barcelona versus Real Madrid. Stuart Joseph will be joining me shortly to talk all about those fixtures. Also the Japanese Grand Prix this weekend. Mark Webber tops the times in free practice. Lewis Hamilton slots in behind him. It's going to be a Red Bull McLaren duel this weekend. The T20 Cricket World Cup final will be between Sri Lanka and the West Indies. And joining me at half past the hour is one of England's new recruits for the Indian Test Series. Nick Compton will be joining me on the line. He's, he finally has an opportunity to create a legacy of his own, opening the batting for England. So stay tuned for the next hour. All of that and plenty more to come. Friday Sports Bar with Dom Aldworth. It's the Friday Sports Bar with Dom Aldworth on Talk Radio Europe. Well, good evening and welcome to the Friday Night Sports Bar. Uh, Stuart Joseph will be joining me very shortly in the studio to run through all the football uh, that's taken place during the course of the week, the Champions League, Europa Cup, and of course to look ahead at a big weekend of fixtures throughout uh, Europe. Uh, El Clasico is in, in the French League, in La Liga, and in Serie A as well to look forward to this weekend. Um, but before uh, Stu uh, gets in here, well, I think it's important. It's the first time. I know it's five days old now, but the Ryder Cup, what a tremendous weekend of sport it was. And uh, really the golf was what topped it all off for me. I'm sure many of you stayed up until uh, the early hours of the morning on, uh, on Sunday night, Monday morning, to uh, watch the very exciting uh, singles Sunday. The 39th Ryder Cup it was. The miracle at Medina. One of sport's greatest comebacks for me of all time and one of the greatest team sporting events. Uh, no question about that. And uh, You know, you can throw in the, the spirit of Seviano Barristero certainly was felt from Medina to Madrid. Uh, no doubt about that. And uh, a, a great tribute by his former teammate, Jose Maria Lafabel, uh, very successfully in a partnership for many years in the Ryder Cup with Sevi. Um, they wore uh, on the bag. Sevi was visible to be seen on their sleeves, on their, in their clothes as well, and uh, certainly a great bit of inspiration, which uh, he must have brought Europe's golfers uh, in, in quite a spectacular comeback. There's no doubt about that. Uh, the first two days, uh, Europe certainly looked dead and buried. Uh, coming into the singles on Sunday, they had to look at clawing back a 10 points to 6 deficit. Um, I was following Twitter, actually. I was saying to, uh, to John during the course of the week um, in the morning of the singles uh, Sunday and uh, uh, Ian Poulter who really has starred for the Europeans over the last uh, three Ryder Cups actually said he felt something uh, special was going to happen uh, on his Twitter account and this was going to the golf course uh, and boy did he deliver I mean the whole European side delivered <clears throat> they came uh, really the strategy that they needed to follow and Alaf Abel was hoping was going to happen was if they could win at least five of the first six singles matches just to get some momentum going get some uh, belief going as well uh, coming into the afternoon afternoon singles and uh, I mean they did better than that uh, five of the first uh, matches they won uh, Luke Donald set the tone there Ian Poulter unbelievable performance all weekend yet again from him I don't know what it is when it comes to to match play in the Ryder Cup there is no better player in, in the world at the moment uh, in three Ryder Cups he's now de delivered 11 out of possible 12 points uh, towards the Europeans and their victories in the last three occasions tremendous stuff there by Ian Poulter Rory McIlroy arriving just 10 minutes before he was supposed to tee off getting his times uh, slightly confused there uh, in Chicago uh, but Rory McIlroy delivered a point for Europe as well a much needed point at the time Justin Rowe uh, two down against Phil Mickelson coming into the 17th. Fantastic putt there off the green uh, uh, to, to claw a hole back and, uh, and then overturn that deficit as well uh, to, to, to win the hole against Phil Mickelson. Multi-major winner as well. Uh, give Europe another point. Paul Laurie was simply outstanding. Uh, he didn't even have to complete 18 holes in his victory. Uh, a slight wobble there in the middle for the Europeans uh, as both Johnsons and Jason Duffner, uh, who had a pretty good
good weekend himself, uh, delivered three points there for, uh, for the U.S. to put them in the lead. But then the experience of former world number one, Lee Westwood, he drew Europe level with a 3-2 and two vit- victory over Matt Kutcher, who unfortunately struggled pretty much throughout the weekend uh, for the Americans. Uh, the experience of Jim Furyk as well, gifted uh, Sergio Garcia a point on the 18th holds, much to the surprise of Sergio as well there. And I think to a lot of American fans, uh, if you look at the experience there of, of Jim Furyk and, and after the event, Donald actually said that that was the point that they started to believe that the Ryder Cup was going to come their direction. Uh, whether that was something that Seve had to do with, uh, obviously putting a little bit of extra pressure there on Jim Furyk, we'll never know. Um, a German in the second last match, uh, Martin Kamer, again a former world number one and the PGA, former PGA uh, champion against Steve Stricker. Uh, again, a man of plenty of experience and boy, did he deliver. Uh, I'm sure a lot of English fans out there would have said, if you've got a German there, uh, that was certainly the one person you would want to have had to complete the game uh, for the Europeans. Uh, Stu's, Stu's just walked in and joined me. They're running a little bit uh, late. We'll bring him on shortly. I'm sure he stayed up and, and watched the Ryder Cup. Uh, the, 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 the last match was halved between Woods and Molinari. That gave Europe an outright victory uh, and just the en- an end to an incredible week of golf. Um, we've got to wait now for another two more years. September 2014 in Glen Eagles. Um, a great record so far on the Ryder Cup in recent times. Seven victories out of the last ten for Europe. Could they make it eight and eleven in two years' time uh, at Glen Eagles? But uh, top-class performance and just a, a wonderful uh, weekend of, of golf. And uh, we're going to just see if we can choose just getting all of his, uh, his notes together. We'll give you a little bit of an update as well from the European Tour. Uh, a little bit of an anti-climax, I think, for some of the players uh, after all the noisy galleries uh, that were uh, at Medina Country Club uh, for the Ryder Cup. I think it's going to be a couple of quiet uh, holes for them to tee off from with uh, coming back to Europe. And Brendan Grace is looking good there after round two. 17 under par at St. Andrews, the Alfred Dunhill Links Championship. Uh, he followed up his uh, superb round, opening round of 60, uh, with a second round, 67 today. Uh, so top stuff there from Brendan Grace. He seems to be running away with that at the moment. Five shots clear uh, of Thorben Olsen. Um, a little bit of a, a, a Ryder Cup hangover there for the likes of Paul Laurie, Dustin Johnson, uh, struggling there. At, I think Paul Laurie won over par there, but we can forgive them for that after their heroics uh, of last week. And we're just going to bring Stu in very quickly here. He's just joined us. So hard man at work there, Stu. Good evening and welcome to the show. Um, did you have an opportunity to watch the golf last week? I stayed up all night watching that. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. One of the highlights of my sporting in pleasures over the years. Absolutely brilliant. Just, just an amazing, uh, amazing couple of hours, wasn't it? Certainly on the Sunday, the single Sunday, when Europe looked dead and buried. It looked uh, all over, didn't it? I mean... Uh the only thing I, I got up to watch uh, the Spurs game, and that's the only thing I left. Otherwise, the rest of the time I was watching it the full day. It was it was just incredible. The whole the whole the whole game. Fantastic. Well, you were talking about Spurs. You're going to have your moments, of course. A great victory there for Spurs. I think first time in 23 years they've managed to do it at Old Trafford. Um, now that you're here and you've got all your notes in front of you, and, and don't forget, listeners as well, stay tuned because in 15 minutes' time we're going to be talking to Nick Compton, uh, who's newly appointed England opening batsman, who will be going with England on tour to India. Uh, Nick Compton, after six and a half thousand uh, uh, first class runs in 10 years playing county cricket he finally gets his chance uh, to, to create a bit of his own legacy of course a very famous cricketing family Dennis Compton his grandfather one of England's most successful batsmen in, in past history so looking forward to hearing uh, from Nick and that's going to be in about 15 minutes but we're going to turn our attention back to one of the main reasons why Stu is here um, football football roundup uh, I suppose we can probably begin with uh, La Liga on the weekend um, I mean who's writing the script for Malaga at the moment well, Malaga just doing incredible and I don't know whether any of you listen to I hope you do listen to the commentaries with uh, Paul, Chris and Kenny because the commentaries in the Malaga games are just the highlight of the week they really are tremendous with humour and uh, gives you such a great visual of what's going on but Malaga at the moment are absolutely on fire I mean they're, they're just doing it all I mean they're just winning games uh, they were marvellous against Anderlecht during the week I mean to go there and win 3-0 was quite incredible a couple of the goals were just superb they're playing with a lot of confidence um, it's just incredible what has happened. Goals coming from everywhere. Four goals against Real Betis on the weekend from four different players. Well, Betis, uh, you know, after going, uh, the goalkeeper going off after the first several minutes um, and in a heavy ground, it was obviously they were going to tire as the game went on, and they really did. Um, but uh, don't take it away from them. I, I think I told you I was in London uh, the week before last, and all they're talking about is the problems at Malaga financially. You know, one should stand, stand back and say, my God, this team got rid of their two top players, got 25, 26 million pounds coming to help all the bills. 
just tremendous. They're just, uh, they're just, and absolutely, the, the players generally this year just seem to be a step above how they were playing last year. Fantastic stuff. I mean, a uh, big game for them uh, this weekend, which we'll talk about at the end of the show. Uh, Barcelona and Real Madrid both warmed up uh, with victories for El Clasico on Sunday, which again we'll talk about towards the end of the show. Uh, Barcelona having to come from behind uh, to win three goals to two. Cesc Fabregas on the score sheet there with a brace of goals and David Villa. Um, six wins from six for Barcelona in La Liga so far this season. Yeah, well, Barcelona, you know, I mean, I mean, I think if Real Madrid get beat this week, if you want to discuss that, I mean, if they get beat, they're probably the the uh, the, the, uh, the race for La Liga may be over. They'll be so far clear, uh, Barcelona. 11 points behind if... if uh, Which would be ridiculous after behind. seven games. I mean, that's, that's absolutely mad, but uh, it could easily happen. And I think it's going to be a cracking game. I'm looking forward to it, but I'm looking more forward to the... Uh, Atletico Madrid uh, Balaga two plays three I mean you know that is going to be a terrific game which I think follows the Real Madrid game tough game tough place to go especially with the goal scoring attributes of uh, Colombian hitman up front there Falcao who's been in unbelievable form uh, so far in the beginning of the season Real Madrid getting their season back on track in La Liga uh, five uh, goal to one victory at home in front of their fans against Deportiva La Coruña uh, Ronaldo a uh, hat trick there so good good stuff there from Real Madrid and Jose Mourinho's men uh, finding form at just the right time absolutely Ronaldo got another uh, trick during the week in the European competition as well I mean he is on fire but uh, to look at the statistics I mean they've played 6-1-3 uh, lost one drawn, uh, lost drawn one lost two I mean incredible for Real Madrid to be two matches down uh, uh, lo- you know losing so early in the season but uh, I think they're going to get it together I mean, and I think as I say they're going to go and, and really give a, a good shot at Barcelona I think it's going to be a tremendous game the Premiership, I know you've been waiting for this. We might as well headline with Spurs. A victory at Old Trafford for the first time in 23 years. Three goals to two, they came out on top against Manchester United. Uh, tremendous stuff there. Come on, Dominic, let me have my moment. I mean, you drag, you have a go at me every week uh, with Spurs. I mean, they, the first half, the, the first half performance was just superb. I mean, anyone watching it, Bounce scored a great goal, uh, holding off further down at pace. Um, shot across the goalie for a great goal two and up at half time it was obviously Fergie was going to give the uh, Manchester boys a tongue lashing which he obviously did they came out full of fight United uh, but don't take nothing away we were fortunate perhaps to go 2-1 down and get a quick goal to go 3-1 up 3-2 there was still half an hour to go and we had a, quite a bit of luck as the game wore on but we've been to Manchester so many this last 20 years we've had goals disallowed that were perfect we've had bad referee decisions I don't think anyone would take away our victory it was tremendous tremendous Aston Villa uh, West Brom played out a goal a, a, a one goal a piece draw there Stoke 2-0 two, two against Swansea Peter Crouch must be getting noticed a little bit by the England uh, selectors. Uh, another two goals there for Peter Crouch. Well, I don't think the England selectors go as far as Stoke, obviously, because at the moment he's probably the best centre forward in the country. He's scoring goals at will. Um, he's, he's playing tremendous. And also when Stoke are at home, they're, they're, they're a really, really strong team to beat. And Swansea have got to be careful because they're in free fall at the moment and uh, they need a good result this week. Amazing after the start that they had as well. Yeah, yeah. No, they lost a bit of confidence there. And it's in midfield. Uh, when they sold Allen to uh, Liverpool, I think they've lost that midfield, uh, that they, the depth they had there, and uh, they've really got to get it back quickly. Manchester City, a 2-1 win away against Fulham. Uh, Fulham without Berbatov as well. Uh, Aguero and Zeko on the score sheet there. A much-needed three points for Manchester City. Well, City aren't firing at all, but having said that, they've been a very good home side, and they've got a great form at Craven Cottage. Uh, they never get the winner to the 87th minute when Deco uh, nipped in for... Uh, the 2-1 win but you know champions win games when they're not playing well and City seems to be doing it and they're not playing well 3-1 for Everton at Southampton that puts them in second place in the Premiership a great start to the season for Everton tremendous um, what can you say I mean Southampton went one up and Everton was just too strong and in the end they won quite easy um, Jelovic is playing ever so well up front and the players in midfield are playing so well for Everton they're full of confidence and uh, that team's getting better and better London derby, uh, Chelsea now top or remain top of the Premiership uh, with a good victory there. Two goals to one at the Emirates Stadium. Fernando Torres finding some form. Mato who's been very exceptionally good for Chelsea this season. Uh, Javinho as well, continually scoring goals for Arsenal at the moment. Um, he's proving to be an avid replacement, for, certainly for Robin van Persie at this stage. But nevertheless, Arsenal lost their unbeaten record. Well, before Arsenal fans have a go at me, I mean, the last couple of games they scored six goals against Southampton, six goals against Coventry. But these are all secondary teams. They come up against a decent team like Chelsea and they got beaten. Um, Chelsea really impressed me. They played really well, very tight in midfield. Um, they're looking also very confident at this time of the season and uh, they control the game. Um, Matt is playing out of his skin and generally they look a really good team, Chelsea. In fact, out the, all the teams in the top five or six, Chelsea look the team playing with a lot of confidence. Well, as usual, we're going to finish the show off by looking ahead at the Premiership fixtures uh, for this weekend. Uh, we can now turn our attention, if we can, Stu, to the midweek uh, Champions League and Europa Cup League results. Uh, Spurs, tremendous victory for them uh, against Manchester United and they came crashing back down to earth. Yes, uh, I, I, I had to bring yes, this one yes, up. Uh, they were uh, terrible. They were shocking yesterday. I watched the whole game and... Uh, so we 
we were in so much control. We just needed that second goal, never got it, and uh, we gave away a sloppy goal. Dawson a little bit slow at the back, and we deserve what we got. They've got to realise if they want to think they're going to be a, a good team this year, yeah, Spurs, they've got to go to these teams and give them a beating. Would they play bad or not? They've got to get the result, mm. and this was disappointing. Another English club as well, very disappointing result. Liverpool, great league result, uh, great uh, Premiership result for them on the weekend, five goals to two. Uh, same again, um, mid- midweek uh, Europa, two goals to three, lost to Udinese, who are a very good team, actually, Udinese. They're a very good team, Udinese. One of the top teams in Italy, though not performing as well as last year at the moment, but it's early days. But uh, no, they, they, you know, Liverpool were a bit disappointing because they started off like a house on fire, which they do. There's so much energy in that team. But uh, at the end of the day, the last 10, 15 minutes, they couldn't do much about getting the goal back, and uh, Udinese deserved the, the win. Newcastle United three goals to nil against Bordeaux that's a great result for Newcastle it's in James's Park well Newcastle has done well they head uh, Group D they've got four points from the first two matches uh, they've done very well they drew it uh, Maritino in the first game and beat a good Bordeaux team three nil yesterday so uh, you know Newcastle going very well Champions League uh, on the agenda Tuesday and Wednesday past um, some good results there for the English clubs uh, Manchester City against Borussia Dortmund a little bit lucky Joe Hart keeping them in the game there Borussia Dortmund and Dortmund are a class outfit God they are I was going to swear but I won't they, they were a tremendous team if that's the, the standard the top of the uh, German league Excellent, tremendous performance. Um, City, I thought, were outplayed for some of the stage. Joe Hart was unbelievable. I've never seen such a great goalkeeping display. And thank God he's an England goalie. He's a young guy. He's going to be in that goal place for at least over 10 years now uh, to come. And we've got a great goalkeeper there. But City, I don't know. Something's not right. The family, the team, the club, something's not right within. Definitely not. Uh, not looking good at, at the moment for them in Europe. Uh, Real Madrid, Cristiano Ronaldo, six goals in two games in a 4-1 victory away from home against Ajax. Well, Real Madrid, uh, you know, six points from the first two matches, won both games. And, uh, you know, going back to City, they're going to find it hard to get out of this championship. They've got to start winning some games very, very soon. Because um, if they don't, they're going to be in trouble. They go to Ajax on October the 24th and they've got to get a win there. Uh, but Real Madrid are playing, you know, playing well. What can you say? They're, they're really... They're really playing out the skins at the moment. Probably the managers told them, sort it out. You know, if he starts shouting, I'm sure they, they react to him. Not ideal preparations for Paris Saint-Germain. The big spenders in Europe this year. Uh, midweek uh, going down to FC Porto, one goal to nil. Big game for them on the weekend. Uh, they really could have done with a positive result there. Yes, that was disappointing, wasn't it? I mean, there's so much money spent there. And uh, I thought they, they, they've been playing well the last few matches in uh, France. They start off a bit disappointing. And uh, I'm surprised to see them go down 1-0 in Portugal. But uh, there, there you are. It's a strong... This Champions, uh, Champions League is a difficult league in hard games. I think uh, Arsenal Olympiacos at the Emirates, uh, probably a, a really good fixture for Arsenal um, after their loss to Chelsea. And they came out comfortable winners there. Three goals to one. That man, Jovino, again, new signing. Podolski as well, who's certainly started to pay back that uh, the money they paid for him. Uh, and uh, Ramsey as well on the score sheet there. Much better. Improved performance there by Arsenal. Yeah, Ramsey playing ever so well, and Jovino, as you say, scoring goals now. I mean, Arsenal looked a really good outfit against the Olympicos. I don't know how good they are in the Greek league, but uh, a 3 1 win was comfortable, and uh, Arsenal seemed quite happy. They got six points in the first two matches, and uh, you know they've got Schalke at home on October the 24th, the next home match. If they can get three points there, they're probably clear for the next round. AC Milan got a little bit lucky against Zenit St. Petersburg away from home, three goals to two, but let's go back to that side, that local side of ours, Malaga in Europe, two wins from two in the Champions League against Anderlecht away from home, three goals to nil there, another tremendous result. It was just, I, I couldn't get over it. I mean, they were so in command the whole game, you know, uh, I, I don't know how good Anderlecht are, you know, how good Belgian football is. It seems all the good Belgian players are all over here playing in the Premier League because they've got a decent national team, Belgium. But um, Anderlecht was disappointing, but I won't take nothing away from Malaga. They are really playing so, so well. Uh, the goals were excellent and uh, the whole team, um, uh, Joaquim, you know, there's not, no youngster and yet he played for about 80 minutes and he gave 100% and they're playing with this, I, I can't explain it, they're just so confident when they're playing. You can see it in their play, lovely football and I think it's far better than last year. I think the team is better after losing two of their top players. Ideal preparation for them ahead of their big game against Atletico Madrid as well. Oh, they're a cracking game now. I mean, they're going to go there full of confidence. It's going to be a full house there because Madrid are doing so well as well. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be one of the, the games of the season. It really excites it. Somebody that is doing very well at a new club, Robin Van, Robin Van Persie, continues to score for Manchester United in a 2-1 win away from home against a side that I'm not even going to try and pronounce their name. Um, but a, a good win, nevertheless, for United. Well, going back to Van Persie for the time, uh, for the minute, when uh, Rooney came on in the second half against Spurs, that's what changed the whole formation of the game. I think those two, when they get to know each other, are going to be a formidable uh, combination up front. Um, but United, again, you know, they weren't outstanding. But, you know, it's, it's getting wins, getting three points on the board. It's early days in the uh, Champions League. They just need points. 
Seven consecutive draws in Europe now for Juventus. That's a record against Shakhtar Donetsk. Chelsea came out 4-0 winners against North Holland. I think I pronounced that one right. Uh, Juan Mata again in top form for Chelsea. Yeah, Chelsea doing brilliant, aren't they? I mean, they're playing with a lot of confidence, whether it's league, with whatever. But mind you, when they play Chelsea, when they play Juventus, uh, you know that two-two draw. I thought. Um you know, Juventus had the better of that game. Again, it'd be good to see Chelsea have a good top couple of games. I mean, they beat Arsenal well. It's going to be good to see them playing a few more teams at the top and seeing how they go through the season. At the moment, as I say, I think Chelsea are the best team in form in the UK. An 89th minute goal by Samaras at, in Moscow uh, to give Celtic the points. Three goals to two. Another tremendous result there. Well, who would have taken Celtic to get four points in the first two matches? Nil nil against Benfica in the first game. Three two at Spartak this uh, this time. I mean, it, it's, it's fantastic. They're just behind Barcelona. Barcelona. Uh, the bad news is they go to Barcelona on the uh, 20, uh, 23rd of October, but even if they don't get anything there, they've got every chance of qualifying now, and that'd be great for Scottish football. Barcelona continued their winning streak. Uh, no uh, Lionel Messi on the score sheet for a couple of uh, matches now. Um, still no problem scoring goals. That suggests to me that more than likely he'll score on the weekend against Real Madrid. 2-0 uh, victors against Benfica. Uh, they haven't managed to come away with any points. Uh, well, this is the first time, I think, in three occasions they've managed to go to Benfica and come away with some points. Uh, but a, a good a good victory there. Sanchez and Fabregas again on the score sheet for Barcelona. Well, it's, you know, the first two games, again, six points from two games. They're pretty comfortable. And with Celtic, Benfica and, Bar- and Sparta out, making up the, uh, the combination, you know, Barcelona are going to have an easy ride through this group, I'm sure. And uh, the, one of the biggest shocks, actually, Valencia had a good victory against struggling Lille, two goals to nil at home. But the biggest shock on the night, certainly in the week of Champions League, was Bayern Munich going down three goals to one to Barte. Barte won their first Champions League match in 13 attempts, I think it was, uh, two weeks ago. And they've managed to follow that up with a tremendous win against the side that was unbeaten coming into this match this no, season. Absolutely tremendous. I mean, to go to Lille and win 3-1 in the first game and then beat Bayern 3-1, I mean, my, what excitement that is. Top of their league with six points. Uh, I think it's just a blip for uh, Bayern. But, you know, Valencia and Lille in, in the combination, it, nothing's for sure in this group, really. Uh, in a lot of these groups, you've got so many good teams uh, and this one's also going to be a very hard group to get out of. Well, listen, Stu, before we go to a commercial break, is there anything else that you wanted to bring up... Uh, with regards to European football or Champions League football before we get Nick Copton on the line? No, I just think it's a very exciting season. I mean, the football with the Premier League has started off so exciting this year. Uh, we've seen so many great games already and the European games I've watched recently have been superb. It just seems to be an early start to the excitement of the of the leagues, of the championships, of the uh, Europa. I mean, there's some great teams in the Europa. Don't write the Europa League off. There's some fabulous teams in there. Are Spurs one of those teams? Oh, they're number one, obviously. <laughs> it is a very exciting football season so far. We've got some exciting games to look forward to this weekend. We're going to be having a chat about those uh, towards the end of the show. Uh, stay tuned, because after the commercial messages, we've got England's latest recruit. Uh, Nick Compton will be joining me on the line. He'll be opening the batting for England in the Test Series coming up in India. Uh, look forward to having a chat with uh, Nick. So stay with us and we'll see you the other side of these messages. TRE. Well, good evening and welcome back to the Friday Night Sports Bar. Unfortunately, I've been trying to get hold of Nick there during the commercial break. Um, I can only hope that he's seen the number and he gives us a ring back in the studio. What a terrible shame we didn't get an opportunity to talk to Nick uh, this evening. Uh, I will make some efforts to see if we can get him on uh, again next week. Uh, Nick Compton, of course, one of the great cricketing families uh, fr- from England in the past, has now finally got his call up to England as the opening batsman in, uh, in the wake of uh, the retirement of Andrew Strauss. Uh, the former England captain. So we will make uh, some sincere efforts to see if we can get Nick on uh, next week. But uh, we'll stay with cricket if we can. And uh, the T20 World Cup does actually continue. Uh, we've, we've, got a, we've got a caller on the line coming in here. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, good evening and welcome to the Friday Night Sports Bar. Uh, yeah, good evening. Just a quick note. Uh, what's the guy who does a commentary on the Malaga games? Uh, Paul Breen Turner. All right. Yeah, just let him know if you can find something more original when Malaga scores a goal. What, 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 what does he actually, what does he do? Can you, can you tell us what he does? Well, you know, he tried to imitate the Spanish when they score a goal, like goal, and he just hasn't got it. Okay, but Paul, if you're listening, <laughs> sorry, your name is? Dexter. De- Dexter, can you, can you do us a favour? Can you actually do what Paul Breen Turner does for us? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, come no, on. We, ha- we have to have a laugh at that, what he does. <laughs> but, but, I mean, his, his commentary, I must say, is, is actually, is, it's extremely good. I mean, it's a very difficult thing. Uh... No, the commentary is very good, but when they score a goal... Tell him to find something original. <laughs> we, we, we're going to do that, Dexter. We're going to pass the message on. Paul, if you're listening, there you go. You heard it from Dexter there. Uh, Dexter, what about Malaga's performances at the moment? Fantastic, isn't it? Brilliant. Yeah, you know, they're like, you, you, you put on the telly and wherever you, you're in the world, you'll see Malaga come up. 
and, and you know? just just out of interest, you're actually calling us from the UK, aren't you? No, you're not okay. Well, there's a UK number that's come up there. I thought you're an avid listener of Talk Radio Europe in in England on the internet, but you're not. Uh, but thanks very much indeed for your call. Thank you. Dan. We'll pass those we'll pass those messages on to Paul Breen Turner. Okay, great. Bye. Stu, what do you make of that? C- can you actually do what Paul does uh, when well, Malaga... He gets very excited. Of course he does, Well, Kenny's he? in the other room. Kenny could probably do it better than me, but he goes something like a... Oh! As long as he can. He's got more wind than me. Good stuff. Well, I mean, Paul, Paul and the team keep up the, the, the good work there, and uh, obviously we th- I thoroughly enjoy listening to your commentary as well. Uh, we're just going to go back. I think we've got a, another caller on the line here. If you can just bear with me a second, and we'll bring you in. Good evening, and welcome to the Sports Bar. Good evening, this is Margaret, and I disagree. I think he does really well. There you go, Margaret. Dexter, did you hear that? Margaret believes that Paul Breen Turner does a great well job. Well said, well said. We believe he does as well, and if he gets... And he puts ex- great excitement into it, and everybody should remember that he's always followed Malaga. He has indeed, and he knows an awful lot about that club. He's very, very passionate very towards passionate. it. Fantastic. Passionate. And, and what do you make of Malaga's performances, Margaret? I'm delighted. I'm euphoric the same as he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, fantastic stuff. Hopefully they can keep scoring goals, and we can still keep hearing Paul Breen Turner several times every match making those. Margaret... I'm, th- I'm, I'm going... I mean, for a big problem when they play against Barcelona. They're going to have big problems. Well, I think most teams generally do have big problems. My husband is a big Barcelona fan. Oh, is he? So so, so what actually happens in the house during that? Well, I want Malaga to win and he wants Barcelona to win. (laughs) Okay. And, uh, and, I mean, do you normally have something up uh, bet? I mean, does he have to do the ironing if Malaga win or Barcelona lose? No, no, no. Up to now, Malaga have never won. So there's no point in doing anything. But it'll be different next time. You never know. There's certainly this season. Stuart, do you want to say something there tomorrow? You've got nothing to worry about. We're not playing Barcelona until the 13th of January at home. So you can rest assured and just take it easy until then. That's right. Okay. All right, Margaret, many thanks for your call. And uh, again, hopefully, Paul, if you're listening, you've got plenty of fans out there. Uh, Enjoy your weekend, Margaret. Thanks for calling in. This is marvellous. People, you know, supporting Malaga. We're actually getting calls, um, you know, obviously, you know, it's it's just wonderful that people are taking their time to uh, really appreciate their local side. Well, we've got another caller on the line here, actually. So we're going to bring you on as well. Good evening and welcome to the Sports Bar. Hello, good evening. I don't think the first caller was saying that Paul doesn't do a good job. It was only the goal thing. I think that was misinterpreted. But um, what I, what I, I, I think he does a great job. But um, when, when the promo comes on at 2 o'clock in the morning and he's shouting goal and I want to, everything to be quiet, it is so <laughs> annoying. I'm going to ask Alan T if he can do a quiet promo for the middle of the night. Sometimes it's just too much. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks very much indeed for that. Lots of lady callers tonight. You're almost That's welcome, lovely. ladies, to give us a ring in the studio at any stage. <laughs> Uh, 951 uh, Stu, yeah. Yeah, you know, you talk about excitement. I mean, AC Milan come to Malaga on the 24th of October. I mean, how exciting is that? Malaga that, at, a, at the Rosaleda. I mean, that is just going to be tremendous. It, tremendous stuff. I mean, unfortunately, AC, you know, they were start of the season in, in Serie A, that is, for about 80 years. Uh, they've sold a lot of their top players. Some have retired as well. Uh, not quite the AC Milan side that we've uh, we've seen in the past, but a very good record in Europe, of course, under Paolo Maldini, the captain, uh, before a tremendous record in uh, in the Champions League from the past. So to see them and to see them in, in those jerseys uh, playing at La Rosaleda yeah, Stadium I mean. is, is going to be quite yeah. something as well. I, I, they should play in their stripes, their, their red stripes. They won't interfere with Malaga's blue and white, will it? I wouldn't have thought so, because no. Because I like no. seeing them in those colours, because when you go back in history, that's what we see. That's the Milan that we uh, remember. And I've got to tell you, Malaga must fancy their chances in taking on Milan as well, actually. I mean, if you think of the, the side that they used to put out on the pitch on a regular basis uh, in, in Europe those years ago with Maldini at the helm there, um, not quite the same outfit as they were in the past, and Malaga will fancy their chances, at least a point, at least. Well, why not? I mean, they're 10th in the league, which is unusual to see them, you know, midway in the league. They've lost three matches, one, two, drawn, one, lost three, which is uh, quite incredible so early in the season, like Real Madrid's record, which is quite uh, a soft for the so early in the season. But uh, the weekend, um, you, you know, it's a local derby there, Milan and Inter Milan. So. Yeah, well, you've got Milan and Inter Milan um, in, at the San Siro. You've got El Clasico on Sunday night. And then you've got the French El Clasico as well. It's the top two, Paris Saint-Germain versus Marseille. Uh, number one, Marseille, top of the table there at the moment. Paris Saint-Germain can go top if they take all three points um, on the weekend there. So it's a massive weekend of football to come uh, through well, three, three different leagues as well. I know, very exciting. Uh, Marseille lost the first game of the season last weekend, 4-1, got a bit of a thrashing. So it's going to be interesting to see if they come back. But they're at home, Marseille, so they've got all the home advantage. It'll be a great atmosphere there. And that was a result that uh, they certainly were expected to get three points as well, weren't they? Which was uh, Marseille's uh, loss on the weekend. Absolutely, yeah. I can't even pronounce the name of the team. Valence, Ness, or whatever. I, I never know. It must have been the team that's come up. I'm sorry about my pronunciation. 
But uh, no, it's, it's uh, when I saw that result, I couldn't believe it because they've done so well early on. Well, t- unfortunately uh, for the listeners out there, I mean, apologies once again. We couldn't get Nick on the phone. Um, we will make it a, an effort to get Nick on next week. Uh, Nick, of course, is the new um, in, in the England squad for the Test Series uh, to go to India. He's replaced Andrew Strauss up front uh, in the batting order. Uh, not too sure what happened there. I spoke to Nick just before the show, uh, but we will make a determined effort to get him back on there. Uh, we're going to stay with cricket and just uh, do a little bit of a rundown of sport that has been taking place, and then we're going to turn our attention back to Stu and football for the fixtures for the weekend. Uh, the T20 lineup for, for the World Cup final is now official. Host Sri Lanka uh, will be taking on the West Indies. Uh, Sri Lanka recorded a tremendous win against Pakistan yesterday um, by 16 runs. Uh, 139 for four they set. Uh, the Pakistanis uh, off the back of a, a 42 from Jai Wardner. Dilshan 35. Pakistan responded uh, 16 runs short. 123 for seven. Uh, great stuff there by the hosts. They have been one of the best sides, if not the best side, in the tournament so far. And thoroughly deserve to be there. A massive win for the West Indies. We always like the West Indies uh, cricket when they're doing well. I mean, they've been in the doldrums slightly for the last sort of 10 or 15 years. They threw to their first major final. The West Indies defeated Australia today, one of the favourites, uh, comfortably as well. I mean, the 205, uh, the West Indies set uh, Australia, who fell well shy, I think 70-odd runs shy of that. Uh, Chris Gale, the most devastating batsman in this form of the game, scoring 75 of just 41 balls. Kieran Prada, uh, Pollard in the middle order, uh, abling uh, assisting him there with 38 from 15 and Ravi Rampal with the ball in hand, 3 for 16, destroying the Australians' hopes of lifting the T20 World Cup. Uh, it's going to be a fascinating final. Uh, very difficult to, to choose between those two. Uh, something makes me go towards uh, Sri Lanka slightly. The uh, depth of their spinners that they have and the class that they have uh, in the likes of Sangakara and Jaya Wardner might prove to be a little bit too much for the West Indies, but when you've got a player like Chris Gale in there, it's all about who can score the most runs in 20 overs. Uh, we know that he's more than capable of doing that. Uh, turn our attention to MotoGP, which took place last week up north in Aragon. It was Danny Pedrosa who won um, his fourth race win, uh, his, his third, beg your pardon, in four races at Aragon. Um, he's now narrowed the gap to 33 points between him and Jorge Lorenzo, who tops uh, the championship standings at the moment with four races to go. Tremendous result there for Danny Pedrosa. Still needs a little bit of work to be done uh, if he's going to overhaul uh, Lorenzo, the 2010 champion. Um, but that win certainly has given him some hope, as at least a a slender bit of hope um, and we'll just have a quick look at those points 290 points there for uh, Lorenzo on the Yamaha and Danny Pedroza on 257 Casey Stoner who's been out for the last three races uh, is on 186 there Casey was expected to be back at Phillip Island uh, in Australia after recovering from surgery um, Formula 1 takes place this weekend all the speculation now thankfully has been laid to rest on the future of Lewis Hamilton uh, and Michael Schumacher as well who announced that he will retire officially today or at the end of the season for the second time in his career. Uh, not a, a happy comeback three years for Schumacher in Mercedes, but I don't think it's really down to his skill, um, but just more down to the fact that Mercedes haven't been able to provide him a, a championship winning car. So uh, Schumacher will be leaving Formula One for the second time. Um, Japanese is the host this weekend for round 50 in the high speed Suzuka circuit. Uh, Jensen Button was the winner there last year. Unfortunately, he begins with a five grid uh, penalty uh, for an unscheduled uh, gearbox change. Michael Schumacher <coughs> has a 10 place grid penalty uh, for uh, reckless driving in Singapore. Um, Fernando Alonso came second last year. Sebastian Vettel came third. Those are your two championship uh, contenders uh, for the remainder of the season, no doubt about that. Um, There's, I think, five former winners uh, in Japan that will be lining up on the, on the grid there. Lewis Hamilton is one of those. He was second quickest today behind Mark Webber. Sebastian Vettel coming in there in third. Uh, for me, it looks like it's definitely going to be a shootout uh, on that high speed, speed circuit between McLaren and Red Bull. Um, I expect McLaren to certainly come out on top on, on that one. So looking forward to the Japanese Grand Prix and just have a quick check on those points. Fernando Alonso relay, remains at the top of the table on 194 points. Sebastian Vettel on 165. He's closed that gap following his superb victory in Singapore uh, two weeks ago. Kimi Raikkonen in his comeback season on 149, Lewis Hamilton on 142, Mark Webber on 132. Uh, It is definitely now between those top two for me. I can't see uh, anybody else overhauling, although McLaren still have a a chance to lift the Constructors' Championship um, if they can provide some uh, pretty good points uh, this weekend there for uh, for McLaren at the Japanese Grand Prix. So qualifying is tomorrow. Um, The race is, of course, on Sunday. 
Andy Murray is back in action as well on the ATP Tour. Um, his first uh, tournament since his epic win uh, against Novak Djokovic in the US Open. <clears throat> Djok- Djokovic is also in action as well. He's in Beijing. Um, Japan is where Andy Murray is. He's the defending champion at the Japan Open. In fact, uh, it's a happy hunting ground there for Andy Murray. He won the doubles with his brother there last year as well. He defeated Rafael Nadal in the final to lift the trophy uh, last year. He is now safely through uh, to the semifinals uh, in Japan. And I'll just give you some of those um, matchups there. Andy Murray uh, will face Milos Raonic from Canada, a two times winner on the ATP Tour already this season, the young Canadian. A real good prospect there. Uh, I can't see Murray having too many problems there. Um, so that's one of the semifinals there. And um, uh, Kai Nishikori from Japan in front of his home fans as well. Shocked uh, the, the US Open semifinalist, the number two seed, Thomas Burdich. A tremendous victory there for uh, Kai Nishikori. He's got a relatively easy semifinal against former Australian Open finalist Marcus Bagdadis from Cyprus, uh, who beat Dimitri Tursunov 6 2 6 4. That's your lineup in Japan. Uh, I'll give you your lineups for Beijing as, as well in the, in the China Open. And Novak Djokovic has returned there. Um, he now goes 12 0 in China. Uh, the 2009 and 2010 champion uh, he missed last year um, is looking in particularly good form and uh, of course he's now looking to regain that number one spot as well from uh, Roger Federer who returns to action next week in Shanghai uh, a pretty easy ride there for Novak Djokovic 6 one 6 against uh, Jürgen Meltzer He's now through to the semi-final to face Florian Mayer, who did very well here last year. Uh, Joe Wilfred Songa will take on Feliciano Lopez from Spain in the other semi-final. Uh, the matchup there for me certainly looks to be Novak Djokovic versus Joe Wilfred Songa in the final. And the ladies are also playing in Beijing as well. We can't forget them. French Open champion uh, Maria Sharapova and world number one Victoria Azarenka have yet to drop a set. They threw to the semi-finals. It looks like it could be another repeat US Open, Australian Open final uh, there for the ladies in Beijing. Also through there for, uh, for the ladies, you've got Angelique Kerber, who's enjoying a, a sensational season so far, um, and she defeated. Uh, she will be taking on uh, Marion Bartoli as well in the other semi-final. So those are your lineups in Japan and China uh, on the ATP Tour. A uh, little bit of rugby news to give you as well. Big game in prospect uh, tomorrow. It's the final of the rugby championship. Australia will be taking on Argentina, and the, the two best rivals or biggest rivals in uh, rugby, without doubt, the All Blacks versus the Springboks. Uh, it's pretty much a dead rubber there as New Zealand has secured the rugby championship with a comprehensive uh, victory over the All Blacks uh, last, uh, over the Argentinians, I beg your pardon, last week. Uh, but it's always a great occasion to watch uh, the Springboks take on the All Blacks. And in the Aviva Premiership, Harlequins are no longer top. They lost their unbeaten ret- record to 2010 champion Saracens um, on the weekend. 18 points to 16, Saracens reigniting their championship credentials. Number 10, standoff Owen Farrell, the young son of um, Andy Farrell, the former rugby league star, uh, man of the match performance there. Northampton have gone top of the table with a 24 four points to six victory against Wasps. Uh, they the only side now that are unbeaten in the Aviva Premiership. Uh, there were also wins for Gloucester, Leicester, Bath over Sale, who have yet to record a win this uh, this season, yeah, Danny Cipriani must be wondering why on earth he decided to sign for sale. Um, just a look ahead to some of the big uh, contenders um, this weekend. The Leicester Tigers uh, will be at sale. Northampton at London Irish. Harlequins at Exeter, at, at, at Exeter, I beg your pardon. And Saracens at London Welsh. Uh, the four big guys there, all away from home. I expect all to register away victories as well. Uh, and one more lead to get through there. The Rainbow Pro 12 Direct. Ulster remain unbeaten with a comprehensive 48 points to 19 win over Cardiff. Uh, they're top of the t- table there. Uh, Connett stunned Leinster inflicting their second defeat of the season 34 points to 6 against Leinster former champions. Ospreys doing the same damage to Munster. 30 points to 15. Two shock losses there for Leinster and Munster. Uh, they desperately need to get their season back on track. Uh, wins there also for Treviso, Glasgow and the Dragons. Um, so that's your Pro 12 direct. Uh, Ulster top of the table there uh, after a superb start to their season. Uh, 10 minutes left and we've got plenty of football to get through Stu. Um, shall we begin perhaps uh, looking ahead to the fixtures in La Liga um, well the two big fixtures of course uh, we've got uh, El Clasico from the Camp Nou on Sunday night Barcelona versus Real Madrid it is the first instalment of El Clasico in La Liga uh, we've already seen them taking on each other in the Spanish Super Cup uh, where Barcelona came out on top in the first leg at the Camp Nou uh, Real Madrid reversing that uh, uh, that result uh, in the Bernabeu to lift the Super Cup I think probably more to be expected Barcelona probably to win on Sunday night well, I'm, I'm going to disagree. I, I, I fancy Madrid. I think they're going to go there with nothing to lose because they really have to get three points and I think they're going to come away with it. I just think they're going to turn them over. I'm probably going to be wrong, but there you go. Uh, no, there's some good fixtures. Mallorca are playing Granada, Leventi and Valencia. Should be a good game. Uh, Zaragoza and Getafe. 
Uh, Real Betis, after last week's defeat by Malago, got Real Sociedad and Vallecano and Deportivo La Canruña. So there's some good games, as usual, in all the uh, Premier Leagues in Europe. Um, Malaga, a real test away from home. Um, one of the real European hotshots in front of goal this season. And last season was the Colombian uh, Falcao, who's been in, in rich vein of form as well again for Atletico Madrid. This is, the, I think, Malaga's real, first real test of the season, don't you think? Yes, but defensively, they're playing really well. I think, for me personally, Demichelis is playing out of his skin. I liked him last year. This year, he's even better. And the whole defence seems to be a lot tighter. Um, You've got Isco playing tremendously in midfield, you know, supporting the uh, the couple of guys up front. And uh, I just think generally, as I say, I'm going to repeat myself, they look a better team defensive. They look very, very strong. And yes, it's going to be a hard game, of course it is. And don't let's get carried away. They can't go and just win every game as they go. If they can get a point there, it'd be a tremendous result. Um, turn our attention very briefly to Serie A. Uh, in Italy, Juventus are currently leading the league there alongside Napoli. Uh, Juventus going for their 45th consecutive uh, point, or at least they haven't lost for 45, 44 game matches now in Serie A. They're away to Siena, a relatively easy trip there for them. Expect Juventus to get the points, but the big one is at the San Siro. AC Milan enjoying their worst start to their Serie A season in 80-odd years. Uh, take on Inter Milan at the San Siro. Uh, some reports that I actually read today that you could actually see for the first time with a fixture, fixture as big as this with a half-empty ground because of uh, fans are very unhappy with AC uh, Milan and their starts and their players and their start to the season. That would be un- 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 unheard of. Well, the attendances are, are very poor in Italy generally. The support seems to be very poor, but, you know, there should be a, f- a big crowd there. I mean, Inter are going to fill the crowd when they've got, uh, fill the ground when they've got home matches, so, you know, it's on their local stadium. You know, I think it'll be a big crowd there. Stu, I'm just going to bring, we had a caller on the line here. We're going to bring you in. Good evening and welcome to the Friday Night Sports Bar. Hello there. Good evening. Uh, we've lost the, we've lost the caller. Sorry if you if you can hear us there. Please, you're more, most welcome to give us a ring back uh, in the studio. Another big fixture as well. Napoli doing very very well. Cavani, the big Uruguayan hotshot there for them uh, against Udinese, uh, a side that's performed particularly well in the last couple of uh, years. Yeah, that should be a, a cracking game. Second v fourteenth. Um, you know, Napoli are playing well and uh, doing well in the league. They're second in the league, so you know, expect a good game there. It's lovely when you look through all these names of all these European competitions and all the the clubs. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're playing in Spain in in the Premier. There's some great games all around Europe every weekend. And it's, as usual, the Premiership continues as well. Uh, one more big game that we did mention earlier as well. Top uh, versus second place in the French League. Big spending, PSG, uh, Paris Saint-Germain take on Marseille. Uh, another big fixture in France uh, for football fans to look forward to as well. Ibra- Ibrahimovic has been in stunning form since he signed uh, for the uh, Paris club. Uh, I think six or seven goals so far in the league. In fact, half of, more than half of their goals he scored. Well, he's, he's tremendous. I mean, he's getting on in years, but he gives 100%. And Paris Saint-Germain drew their first couple of matches which was disappointing won the next four so they've gone right up the league in the second place behind Marseille uh, only three points behind them and like you say uh, Dominic it should be a, a cracking game I'm sure uh, lots of cracking games in the Premiership. We've got five minutes left. I don't know where the time goes so quickly every uh, every Friday night, uh, but we'd very rarely leave enough time to have a look at the Premiership. We've we've got a bit of time on our hands uh, uh, this evening. Manchester City versus Sunderland. Uh, this is a really big game for City. I mean, this is a six-pointer. They need to get uh, consolidate. Uh, the, the, we've got a, that caller ringing back in, Stu, so just bear with me a second there, uh, and we're going to get you on the line there. Good evening, and thanks for calling the Friday Night Sports Bar. Hello. Yes, hi there. Good evening and welcome to the show. Yeah, hi, it's Nick Compton here. How you doing? Hey, Nick, how you doing? We've been uh, frantically trying to, to get hold of you uh, during a commercial break, Nick, and uh, we've, we've literally got five minutes left of the show, but many thanks for, for ringing us back in, Nick. Uh, we'll, we'll have a chat. Yeah, I... yeah. Look, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry about that. I, um, I had an absolute stinker and um, I was literally trying to get back to my uh, car. I'll explain, uh, I'll explain later, but... Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. No, n- listen, Nick, not at all. We've managed to get you on for, for the last five minutes of the show, if that's okay. Uh, N- Nick, yeah, that's great. More importantly, many congratulations. Uh, uh, ten years uh, applying your trade in the county, uh, six and a half thousand odd first class runs, uh, 29 years old, and you get your England opportunity. Fantastic stuff. You must be delighted. Yeah, absolutely over the moon. I, I suppose uh, you just don't know when these things are going to happen. Sometimes, though, for some players, they happen at a, at a younger age, perhaps, and. I think you can't put a, a sort of a currency on, on time, really, or, or when it's going to happen for you individually. I think every situation is an individual thing, and everyone sort of develops at their own rate. So just, you know, very, sort of, I suppose, relieved, and um, it's just great to, to finally get there. And, and a great opportunity. I mean, you one of the most famous cricketing families in England. Uh, your grandfather was a marvellous batsman for England. Uh, you've got a real opportunity now to create a bit of your own legacy. 
yeah, I think it's quite easy to look ahead and get quite excited about, you know, the opportunity ahead. And, and of course, that's something that I want to do. But uh, at the same token, you know, it's important to get too sort of ahead of yourself. But I think there's a, a, a long way to go before I, I start sort of uh, making statements or anything like that. I think, you know, just to, to get in there and go in with a, an open mind, really, and try and really put to practice what, I, what I've done over the last couple of years uh, quite consistently. If I can, you know, stay true to those despite the increased kind of distraction and, and you know, the, the bigger stage, then, then hopefully I, I can, uh, you know, be successful. But, uh, you know, those sort of things are in the future. And, you know, I, I think now it's just about obviously getting my head down and, and trying to repeat what I've done over the last couple of years. Nick, you're going to be playing on the subcontinent. India um, will be your opposition. Uh, a lot of people will say India are on the decline slightly. Uh, obviously, they've lost a, a wealth of talent with a bat. Uh, we, gentlemen uh, like Dravid that have had to retire. Uh, this is a really good opportunity for England to, to go away and get a Test Series win in India. Uh, but more importantly, from your own personal perspective, uh, you've got a lot of experience playing cricket on the subcontinent. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, travelling is always interesting. I think... Firstly, I really enjoy going to new countries, new places. I think, um, you know, you've got to firstly and foremost embrace that. And I think as a professional cricketer for the years, it's something that you get used to. Um, you know, I think secondly, you know, going to India, a place like India and playing in their, their own backyard, it's a, it's a very different challenge. You know, you're playing playing against some, uh, you know, obviously some good players who, who know their conditions well and have done very well. So I don't think it's going to be an easy test at all. And to say that India are on the decline, well, you know, I'm not sure about that. They've got a, a lot of uh, good young players coming up through the ranks, and um, you know, I, you know, it's, it's one of those where um, you know I think you've got to go in there and, and sort of just try and give it your best. I, you know, I think it's going to be a very tough challenge. Nick, it's been very difficult for you, of course, with the likes of uh, Alistair Cook and, and Andrew Strauss uh, performing so well for England at the top of the order for a number of years now. Uh, did you ever actually give up hope that perhaps your opportunity would never come? Um. Yeah, look, I, you know, I've said before that, you know, sometimes your dream feels closer and sometimes it feels like it's gone. And uh, I suppose the important thing is to always have that dream because I think it's the one thing that carries you through, you know, dark times, tough times, and, and boy, have there, have there been enough of those. But, uh, you know, it's it's something I've worked towards, you know, uh, for a long time, a long time in my life. And I, as I say, you never quite know when it's going to click or if it's going to click. And I, I suppose you just got to stay... Stay patient and keep believing the people who trust in you because that's what carries you, you know, your family and, and, and mentors and, and people that have, that have backed me over the years. And I suppose, uh, you know, you keep believing and, and suddenly things click. And, uh, you know, I, I think I'm lucky that, you know, things have come together. I, I don't want to sort of speak as if, you know, it's all suddenly happened and I'm, and I'm the finished article. I still have a, a huge respect for um, that thin line between success and failure and I, I, it still exists and I think it's important that you keep that in the back of your mind because that keeps you quite honest and, and quite respectful and, and obviously you know, adds to the humility really because it's a, it's a tough game that can swing both ways. Nick, I'm ever so sorry. We're about 30 seconds away from the news. I'm just very grateful that you, you took time to give us a ring in the studio. Uh, at least we had you for five minutes. Uh, Michael Hussey made his debut for Australia at the age of 29. Uh, he's had a great career, and I'm sure that, uh, that, that something similar like that lies uh, in way to head. And, and best of luck in India. Uh, I look forward to watching your performance, scoring a hat load of runs up the front there with Alistair Cook. Thanks, mate. I hope so. Yeah, thanks very much. Cheers, Nick. Thanks for ringing up. Yeah, no worries. Uh, Stu, I'm terribly sorry about that. Many thanks there to Nick. We've got seven seconds left. At least we had Nick on the line. Um, have a great sporting weekend. Talk Radio Europe, on the hour, live, international news from Sky.